What's up everybody? It's your girl back for another video. So have some news I want to share with you all. Um, I recently found out that I am pregnant. I'm very excited about it. My husband and I wanted more children. Um, I'm actually going to make 33 years old tomorrow. So we were actually talking like maybe three weeks ago. Okay. If that, and we were like, it'd be really cool if I had another baby. My husband was like, I really want, you know, another child. And I was like, I do too. I was putting my son's baby stuff up, you know, around that time because he's a toddler now and he doesn't need it. So we were in the garage talking, you know, should we keep this baby stuff? And he's like, yeah, go ahead and keep it. Cause you know, I, I really would like to have another baby. And then we found out that I am because for the past couple weeks, I have been really sick. That's how we found out. It, it got to the point where I was nauseous every day. I Everything was making me sick and I lost my voice for a little while. I was really hoarse. I could not breathe. My sinuses were stopped up. I was having headaches. I just felt really bad and that's how you feel in early pregnancy. So um, we found out that I am. According to my calculations, I'm right in the second month. We are expecting the baby to be here in May early June. So um, really excited. We have not shared it with the families yet. We're going to wait till after the first ultrasound and then I'm going to share it with everyone. Um, I wanted to share it with you all though. I want y'all to know what's going on with me. Um, and you know, when I'm absent and I can't make videos all the time, I'm just not feeling well. I tried the film yesterday and I could not stop feeling like I had to vomit. It was just ridiculous. Imagine your worst hangover you've ever had in your life, that dizzy, nauseous feeling and you just cannot get out of bed. That's what it feels like and it hits you at random times throughout the day. It could hit you at night also, but it's been really difficult to sleep. Um, I'm constantly in and out the bathroom and I have a toddler, I have a daughter, I have a husband, a home, a garden, a lawn. I have many, many things that I'm responsible for and it's just been... It's been rough, but we're super excited having children, being a mother. That's what life is all about to me. That is my most important job. I love it. There's nothing that makes me happier. I'm fulfilling what I feel like I'm supposed to fulfill. Um, so that gave me an idea for this video. I wanted to talk about what is a woman's most important job in life? For me, I'm very traditional conservative. I mean, I graduated college. I've had good jobs. I've accomplished many things in my life, but nothing trumps being a mother and having children and just being a good mother. That is my most important job in life. That is what I am here to do. Okay. So I feel like that's what women are here to do. I feel like that's naturally what we do. We give birth. That is our job to be the mothers, to be the nurturers. It all starts at home the way we were raised as kids. I worked as a substance abuse counselor slash family therapist for a while when I lived up north. That's what I did. That was that was my career. And I can't tell you all patient after patient, successful person after person would sit in my office and every problem they had in life always stemmed back to their childhood. Abuse, neglect, abandonment, it always stemmed back to that. That's where it all starts. I could tell y'all personally, I was abandoned by my birth mother and it affected me profoundly throughout my youth. I had abandonment issues. I rebelled. I didn't trust people. I didn't want anybody getting close to me. I wouldn't let them because I felt like if your own mother could walk out on you, then anybody, you can't trust anybody, you know? And still to this day, I'll see women my age walking around with their mothers and, you know, the woman my age will have her kids with her and you know, their mother, and they'll be shopping at the mall or out eating together as, uh, you know, grandma, the little mother and her children. And I'll envy that. I'll look at that and wish I had that. I'll never experience that. However, the only thing I can do is try to break the cycle and put that energy, that sadness back into being a good mother to my children, because I never want my kids to experience that. So but it all starts from the way we're raised. And then we always hear people talk about the kind of woman their grandmother was. Most of our grandmothers had a lot of kids. Mine had five, my husband's grandmother had nine, and they always you know, tried to work when they had to, but being a mother was 
important to them. Being a homemaker, cooking, clean, and taking care of the kids and the husband, that was important to them. And they don't make women like that anymore. Women today want to be progressive liberal types. They want to be powerful and liberated. And if you go up to the average woman today and say, you know, what is your most important job? What's important to you? What do you feel like you're here to do? Well, I want to go back to school and get another degree and I want to, you know, run this company and I'm going to climb the corporate ladder. And, you know, they just, it's always some type of career with them. And folks, I'm not knocking anyone that's fighting and really hard to have a good career and make good money and, you know, establish themselves in life. I mean, that's fine. You need money. You need to have a good job. But the thing is that life is not all about money. Yes, you need money to survive. I'm not saying you don't. But when you get to a certain age, I know many liberal feminist women in my own family, women that I know personally as well, acquaintances that will get to be about 30 years old, they have a great career, no children, no husband. And if you ask them, you know, what do you plan on doing with the rest of your life? What, what's important to you? And it's always, you know, it's never, oh, well, I'm, I'm ready to have a family. I want to be a mother. It's always, well, I'm going to go back to school because I want to, you know, get higher up in this company and I want to run that company and I want to travel and work for this place. And I want to, you know, it, that's what it's all about to them. It's career running the country, running things, running some kind of company. It's never being a mother. That's not important to them. Women actually get offended today if you tell them that. Because I've talked to women and I'd be like, look, being a mother, that's the most important thing to me. And they'll look at me like, oh my God, you must never get to do anything. You're totally oppressed. I would never want to be held down like that. And if I dare tell them, well, being a mother, I mean, that's what we're here to do. Oh my God, that is so sexist. How dare you? I can do anything a man can do. But the thing is, we bear children. A man can't do that. You know, they, they physically cannot do that. And you know what? Men don't want to do that. They're perfectly cool with their duties in life. They don't want to take over our duties, okay? Except for the transgender types, and that's a whole nother video. But real men today they don't want to be women they don't want to give birth like we have to do but a woman giving birth is so powerful like you go through nine months of feeling like crap and your body changes you feel awful and you fight through it and then when you give birth it is the most excruciating pain y'all it's absolutely horrible like i'm already worrying about it and i have several months to go but the thing is when it's over with and you have this beautiful baby that you and your husband created and you know you're holding that baby your body did that and it's so empowering but women want to walk around and you know fight about everything else but they can do something that men cannot do they're always running around talking about well men don't think i could do this i could be a roofer i can be in construction i can do anything a man can do i can be in the army i can do this i can do that but the thing is we give birth and no one else can do that man man can't do that every person you look at today came out of a woman you know a woman gave birth to every person today that you see it's a beautiful thing men don't want to do it they're perfectly cool with their responsibilities and the things that they're capable of doing it's women that are psychotic and want to do everything men can do but they can do something beautiful that no one else can do and they don't appreciate it they don't care about it they think it's oppressive when you tell them hey being a mother you know is your most important job that's what you're good at that's what you're here to do they get highly offended when you say that can't tell you how many messages i get from feminist women that get mad at me and tell me things like we don't want to have a boring life like you do and be held down with children and a husband and an ungrateful man your man's just gonna leave you one day and you're not gonna have anyone <laughs> and, and laughing and stuff but they're sitting at home cuddled up with a bunch of cats no children no husband to keep them warm and i'm telling y'all now i done been to like three funerals in the past two years on my side of the family and oh one for my husband his grandfather every one of those funerals those people that died died around their children and grandchildren two of my aunts were really sick and needed care it was their husband their children and grandchildren that took care of them the people that grow up and the women that never have children like i have two aunts that all they cared about was career 
and climb in the corporate ladder. Now they have money and everything they could ever want except children and a husband. They have a big, beautiful home. And instead of having children, they get a bunch of cats. One of my aunts has like five cats. The other one has a bunch of dogs and that's their children. Those dogs and cats are not going to take care of them when they get elderly and they need help. They're going to end up in a nursing home because they're not going to have anyone to take care of them. I just went to a funeral for my aunt not even a month ago and she died at 80 something years old with her husband by her side, her children and grandchildren in the room. It was really beautiful. That's the way she wanted to go. And uh, I, I couldn't imagine what would have happened to her had she not had a family. But that's what's important to me. That's my opinion. This is my channel. I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this video. There's too many feminists and women out there that get offended about that. But money, career, it all means nothing when you die. You know, when you die and you have children, you leave behind a piece of yourself. You live on through them, your legacy. Your, uh, you know, you continue your family. You continue uh, the species, really. We can't continue the species if nobody's having children but anyway that's my opinion that's what a woman's most important job I love being a mother that's what you know I feel like I'm here to do I'm fulfilling what I'm supposed to do that is uh what I enjoy I love having my children you know I don't put them in daycare when I have I always worked when I had to I worked with both of my other kids but when I had them I stayed home with them I'm the one that did everything for them and uh you know, that's just our beliefs. We don't believe in uh, passing the baby off to a daycare or a babysitter or a nanny or whatever. I believe that's my job to take care of the baby. And I'm proud of that. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, anyway, comment below. What do you think about what I just talked about? And give me a like if you like the video and I'll see y'all back on my next one. Bye.